Hi folks, on today's video I want to talk about why your chronic lower back pain is not going away and what you can do to help it. Listen, if you are liking my videos, my content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, okay? You get notified when your content gets uploaded. You're going to help me help you. All right, let's get into this. So, chronic lower back pain, typically chronic pain is anything that lasts longer than three months, approximately. And I know a lot of you guys out there suffer from, you know, chronic lower back pain, chronic sciatica pain. And quite often there's a number of things that are at play here. And there's not one thing which is the number one thing. So I'm going to talk about three very, very important points today. Number one, um, you may have the best rehabilitation program in the world. You can be going to see the best physio, going to see the best chiropractor, right? But you're still not feeling good. You're still in a lot of pain. You can't seem to get, you know, pass go. You're stuck. What could it be? Very often, it is something you're doing in your daily life. And I like to call these, you can call them pain triggers. A lot of people call them pain triggers. Something which is triggering your pain. And it could be something as simple as the way you put the garbage out. Um, how you pick up the kids, how you get into your car, how you get into bed, how you sleep. And remember folks, we've got 168 hours in the week, okay? If you're going to rehabilitation for, say, four of those, at least 164, okay? We're sleeping for another approximately, what, 49 hours or so. We've got another 120 odd whatever hours to mess up our week, right? Between how we sit at work, um, how we sit in the car, how we do things. So what you need to look at is the days that are worse than others, okay? I want you to start journaling down some stuff, like write down your good days, your bad days. Every day, write down what you did in that day, okay? Did I take the rubbish out? Did I go for a long walk? Did I go to the swimming pool? Did I, you know, take a long drive? Was I at my work later than normal? Was I sitting on the desk a long time? Was I sitting in a different chair? Was I standing at a party? Was I at a networking event? All these little things let us identify the pain triggers because sometimes if we don't write stuff down, We've got no record, okay? It's very hard for us to remember back to what we're doing. But if we can record down how our day was, you know, we put a pain scale between one and 10, of course, one very little pain, 10, you know, a bad day, right? We can start to see a pattern and it's learning what those triggers are and how we handle it. Now, I would say in some cases we can't avoid okay, that trigger. So we need to learn how to do, deal with it. And that's where, and in some other videos, I talk about things like learning how to brace your abdominals, learning how to hip hinge, so we move correctly when we are perhaps taking out the garbage, when we have to stand a little bit longer than how do we stand, how do we posture ourselves, how do we position ourselves, you know, how we put on our shoes, how we get in and out of bed. These types of things, when you learn how to move correctly with your body when you've got pain, you start to remove those stressors because it's those stressors, it, it's like picking at a scab, right? A scab that doesn't, you, know, you keep picking at it, picking at it. Could be the herniated disc, could be the bulging disc, could be stenosis, could be, you know, uh, pinched nerve, herniated uh, uh, sciatica nerve pain. If you keep picking away at it, picking away with like constant micro stresses, it's not gonna go away. So, number one, guys, it's your pain triggers. Right them down, okay, write what happens, you know, what causes you pain in your day, um, you know, think about what you've done, okay, and then whatever you do, do not avoid it, okay, learn to work with it. I'm going to pop a video at the end, it's a very, very useful video, two videos actually, one is learning how to brace, okay, and one is learning how to hip hinge correctly, and it's two very easy, basic um, body uh, behavior modification techniques to let you position your body correctly when you do certain activities. That will go a long way to relieving some of that pain you have in your day, okay? Now, to follow on from this, number two is what they call catastrophizing. Now, very often people get into this what's called a fear avoidance model, and it's going to flash up on the screen there. And this is a vicious cycle, okay? We, we have a pain experience, we have an injury, something happens to us, we're in pain, uh, we get depressed about it, okay, we get despondent about it. You know, we try to go forward, we try to return to activity, we hurt ourselves again, and all that, you know, the fear comes back, oh, I don't want to do that. And then we start sort of catastrophizing and we start tensing up and becoming really like, oh my God, like a robot. Like we cannot do that activity. We're completely fearful of it um, to the point where we do nothing because we, we start internalizing the thinking, oh, everything I do, I'm going to hurt myself. What happens to the body, of course? All right, we, we get, you know, it starts to become, uh, you become stale, you're not moving, deconditioned, losing muscle tone, becoming weaker and the pain just exacerbates because your body now is in a worse position to you know, support yourself, to hold yourself than it was three months, six months, a year before. So when we have something which we know has caused problems in the past, 
we have to look at it, I look at these things like a, like a challenge, right? It's a goal, I'm gonna be able to do that thing again. Now, let's take an example, I know, uh, tennis. Maybe I like, you know, hitting the ball backwards and forwards, something light, you used to play quite well, um, you were you know, reasonably good level, you had your back injury, you, you tried to go back to play, hit it a couple of times, you know, a couple of forehands, backhands, and oh, you're in agony the next day, okay? And you think, that's it, I can't play tennis anymore, right? I'd say, you know, I can, it's game over. No, don't think like that, right? You've got to start very small. You give yourself little, um, little steps, little goals. Could be, you know, take up walking, right? I'm going to be walking for, I don't know, 500 yards, okay, 800 yards. And you just do it step by step by step by step. Listen, when I was in my worst, okay, really bad sciatic and nerve pain, living on the floor, all right? I never thought I'd be able to deadlift again or squat or go back to the gym. I was a disaster. I could barely walk across the room without bursting out in sweat. The pain was so agonizing, yeah? But there's a video that's gonna pop up on the screen just in a second. This is me, it's not, you know, I'm not Eddie Hall, don't get me wrong. This is quite a heavy weight, it was 377 kilos, that's about 830 pounds. It was on the wheel deadlift, which is where, um, it's like a sort of top range uh, deadlift that you lift up. And I never thought I'd be doing that again. Uh, yeah, but I, but it was just a couple of years ago, okay? I can't squat, I can't deadlift again. So you should look at these things, and I know it's hard, I know it's really hard, okay? Because you're f fearful, um, you don't know how to take the first steps. So I am aware of that. So what I'm gonna do for you guys in a couple of weeks is I'm gonna prepare um, a little kind of cheat sheet, if you will, that will start to help you um, readdress how you think about your pains, your chronic pain, uh, some of the things that you, you know, do in your daily life which can affect that pain, and how we can start to take the steps forward, okay, to overcome this catastrophization and you know, get you to a much, much better place, all right? And that's what I'm trying to do here. I've tried to, you know, I developed a course to help people out who are suffering from lower back pain, chronic lower back pain, sciatica pain. Um, if you don't know about it, go and check it out. It's in the link down below. It's a 21-day video course delivered to your email every single day for 21 days. The link's down there. It's www.bashbackpain.com forward slash course. Um, I lead that course. I take you through 21 days of rehabilitation exercises, uh, very specific decompression stretches for the spine, stability work, behavioral modification techniques, to take you from significant pain to way, way much, much decreased pain. And for some people, your pain will disappear, okay? I guarantee it, all right? So go and check it out, check that out, go and check out that course right now. So number two, catastrophizing, um, and you need to look at things differently, okay? And I'm gonna bring you guys a cheat sheet in a couple of weeks, so look out for that video. I'm gonna be bringing it up in the video as well for you. Now, number three, okay, a very, very important one, and some may say this could be one of the most important things ever, and I do harp on a lot about this, is something very simple. I have seen this in my career all the way through. People have come to me, you know, back patients, and I watch, <laughs> The first thing, if you've, uh, you know, a clinician, uh, when you look at somebody when they come in, um, how they move, how they, how they carry themselves, how they put their bag on their shoulder, how they take their shoes off, how they, you know, uh, that tells you a lot about how they move in daily life. And one very, very simple thing you can do, which costs you nothing, is a very simple thing called avoiding flexion before noon, before lunch. Approximately the first four hours of the day, you avoid flexing forward with your spine. Okay, now, this has been researched. Um, it was researched uh, and they basically looked at a, a group of people and they avoided flexion for the first four hours of the day. They followed up with them approximately 18 months later and this, the results still uh, were sustained. Significantly reduced number of pain days and significantly reduced pain intensity. And this was simply by avoiding forward flexion of the spine for the first four hours of the day. So that is very, very, very important. Um, I wrote a blog article on it. I've got a video on it as well. You can go and check it out. It's in the description down below. It's something very, very simple that you can do, but it is simply avoiding bending forward for the first four hours of the day, and it brings you significantly decreased pain, okay? So guys, there's three things to think about. Um, as I said, number one, of course, is your pain triggers, okay? Number two is how you approach that pain as far as catastrophizing is concerned. And three, a very uh, big important one, is trying to avoid flexing before noon. Because I've seen that last one, so many people I've seen, right? They still do a lot of bending forward throughout the day, the first four hours, and that's when the spine is most at risk. If you've got an, an injury, existing injury, 
and you're doing this forward reflection before noon, you are just setting yourself up for you know, recurrent problems, disaster, okay? So it's very, very, very important. Guys, go in and have a look at those three things, okay? Start taking some notes, doing some journaling. I'll be back with you next week. Don't forget to check out those two videos I just mentioned. Have a great week. I'll see you soon.